Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining this new session of the Supply Chain Leaders webinar series. Today, we have the chance to learn from the experience of Bonduel, the worldwide leader in ready-to-use vegetables. Thank you to the speaker, Nathalie Morandière, who is SNOP and Methods Manager at Bonduel Europe Long Life. The presentation will last 30 minutes and will be followed by a 15-minute Q&A session. So please do not hesitate to post your questions throughout the webinar in the Q&A section of your screen. And now I'm going to hand it over to Nathalie to start the presentation. Hello everyone. So I'm Nathalie Morandière. I'm working for Bondwell for more than a year now. And before that, I spent 20 years in supply chain manager in management in different roles. Most of um, my professional life in Mars company and also in a pharmaceutical company, a CMO. So now I'm working for Bondwell Europe Long Life as a SNOP and metal leader. So what I propose you today is uh, to go through uh, three different points. First, it's a presentation of the Bonduel Group, uh, then a focus on Bonduel Europe Long Life and the supply chain transformation that we are doing. And then it's uh, on Belengo, so it's our strategy and the Merlin project where we, where we have work on the demand management. It's a project called Merlin with the support of Future Master. Bonduel Group, uh, um, the ambition of Bonduel is to be the world reference in well living through plant-based food. It's a long story for Bonduel. It's, um, we, um, Bonduel has existed in, since more than uh, 120 years, 30 years, and um, it's a long evolution and um, between 1853. Um, of course, um, our foundation, our DNA is the agriculture and uh, then we started to, um, uh, to create and to produce cans, then frozen products and recently fresh items. So it was in 1997. So the objective of Bonduel is really to be sustainable also for the next generation of the family. Bonduel Group, it's a five brands active in more than 100 countries. So originally it's in France with Bonduel and Casgrain, but now it's everywhere in the world. And with some, uh, uh, some brands, Artie Gardens, Ready Back Foods, Globus. So we, um, we produce and we sell in Europe, in North America, in Eurasia, and uh, with the three main te technologies, which are canned, frozen, fresh goods, with uh, different tonnage, which are indicated. Today, our revenue is more than 3 billion of euro. And uh, in terms of uh, employees, it's more than 14,000 people with 58 indus industrial sites or company agricultural production sites. The objective of Bonduel is uh, to be close uh, of our clients, but also close from uh, the fields. We have all our factories really next to the fields so as to be um, fresh in terms of uh, uh, all the raw material that we use. In terms of implantation, you can see North America, South America, Europe and Central and Eastern Europe. In terms of organization, as a Bondwell group, uh, we are split in different zones. The two main ones are the European zone with Bondwell Europe Long Life with scan and frozen uh, products and Bondwell Fresh Europe um, with uh, really the, the, as a salad, for example. And outside the European zone, we have Bondwell Fresh America, Bonduel America Long Life and Bonduel Orangia Market. So today we are going to talk about the strategy and the supply chain of Bell, so Europe Long Life. Bonduel Europe Long Life, uh, it's, uh, we have really some challenges and uh, we are working really on our supply chain transformation. Our strategy is towards excellence in customer service. Bell Supply Chain Europe, in terms of brands, 
and uh, are split in the market. Half of our sales are linked to the brand Bonduel and Casgrain, and half is linked to the private label. Um, and in terms of markets, we are selling in retail and in food service and B2B. We manage 12 factories, nine warehouses in ambient and five warehouses in frozen. It's uh, divided in five regions and 27 markets everywhere in Europe. You can see that most of our sales are in uh, ambient and, um, and with nearly 6,000 items and frozen it's 2,000 tonnes and nearly 1,000 items. Um, why do we want to change? Um, actually, it's uh, in terms of supply chain, we need to adapt uh, our view and our organization, mainly due to the new challenges that we have in the market. We have uh, some changes in terms of consumption and the role of the national brands is really key at the moment. So we have segmentation by role and use. People want really to have more food and plant protein. And uh, we also see in terms of insight from our consumer that small is beautiful. People and consumer want to have more local consumption and small brand attraction. So it means that uh, we need to offer something different in comparison with um, local brands, but also uh, with our competitor. The role of a national brand is also the societal and environmental engagement. We need to be a role model and uh, in terms of sustainability, but also in terms of education. And it's also the role of uh, the foundation Louis Bonduel. And finally, the, the way we, con we, we use uh, the food today is really linked to ethical consumption and the organic is also key in terms of consumption at the moment. So link to these challenges uh, to, um, to the market, customer and consumer, we need to adapt our supply chain. And uh, the supply chain should be at the heart of the transformation. So for Bonduel, in Bonduel, we have three key major challenges, long-term, short-term, and the transformation. Long-term, it's only due to uh, the way we are working in Bonduel. We work nearly or more than one year in advance uh, for the hectare reservation. Um, and, um, and the way uh, we need really to be accurate in terms of how many products or raw material do we need for the next year. So linked to that, we need to be really accurate in terms of demand management and integrated business planning so as to be able to anticipate what we are going to sell. So it's linked to our baseline, of course, but also for our innovation. So we can have a quite long process if we want um, to, uh, to launch and uh, and our capability to react on the short term can be limited. In the other end, in the short term, we have some challenges in terms of packing planning. We need to optimize our sales forecast and synchronize what we have in local versus local and Europe. So finally, we need to have a big transformation and supply chain organization to face and adapt to these challenges. So now our project. So for Bonduel Europe Long Life, uh, um, it's a project called Merlin and it's linked to the demand management, SNOP, with the objective of excellence. We wanted to, uh, to come from operation focus to customer focus to accelerate the growth. Um, in the past, we were used to, um, to, uh, I'm going to, sorry. Um, in the past in Bonduel, uh, we had a central uh, organization for the demand management. But if we want to grow, we need to be closer to our customer and to our market. And for that, uh, um, we need really to have a business alignment and alignment end to end 
from the supply chain, but also with uh, marketing, sales, finance, and all our region. Um, for the grow also, we want to focus on the transversal decision making. We need to be based on facts and um, to have more rational figures and information. You've seen that uh, we have a lot of uh, challenges. So, the world is moving very fast and we need to answer very quickly to the changes, even if we have some constraints in Bonduel where we need to focus also on the long term. So we need to create this virtual circle based on one set of data. The context of the project is we had a centralized demand management process and, uh, um, and we have created the local supply chain organization um, two years ago, something like that. Also in terms of context, we were used to do what I call demand supply and not sales forecast and demand management for business. The so demand supply, it's, um, we had a review of our sales forecast around three or four times per year, and it was really linked to the reservation of Hector. Um, the production, so the transformation uh, of our vegetables in semi-finished, but in the other hand, we, um, we could see that we had a gap in terms of participation on the short term. And the short term is um, the next six months. So the objective of this project was demand management done mar by market for retail and food service brand. So it's a decentralization of the demand management, demand management process and deploy systems locally. Um, we want also to have a bell core model, a common framework in terms of process, so as to be able to, uh, um, to sustain what uh, we are doing, to be sure that we have the same ways of working, so with a system, of course, but also from a, a process point of view. And linked to that, in terms of process, uh, we needed to work on SNOP and IBP at local, um, market level and European level. The expected benefits of, uh, of this project was to anticipate and understand customer needs. So one more time, it's uh, the world is changing fast and how can we adapt? So we need really to um, capture the voice of the consumer and the voice of the customer. Better information flow and interfaces, it's um, how do we break the silo between the different departments, local, European level, and how do we get uh, the right information from a system point of view. We want to improve our sales forecast reliability, even if from a long term point of view, we had a big issue, but on the short term, it could be something else. Decrease our slow mover and obsolete stock. You can imagine that with uh, this kind of uh, organization and constraint, we could have some slow mover and obsolete stock. When you reserve your hectares one year in advance, you need to uh, know what you are going to sell in 12 or 18 months. So sometimes you are wrong. So if we don't follow that very carefully, of course we create slow movers. And um, one major benefit is uh, avoid firefighting. In Bonduel, during the last 20, 30 years, uh, we had really a huge growth in terms of uh, uh, revenue, but also in terms of people. So we need to adapt uh, with this situation. And uh, the way we were doing uh, our work 10 years ago, 20 years ago, can be radically different now. Firefighting, it's, uh, it can be a way of working. Nevertheless, at the end, you are in the wall, so you need to change that. Um, Another benefit, it's uh, how can we optimize our conditioning planning? Today, it's, um, uh, so it's a packing planning, sorry for the word. Um, today, we have put a focus on our sales forecast and tomorrow, the second part of the project will be to optimize the way we organize our factories, our dispatch link to uh, this uh, sales forecast. And 
Last but not least is make successful innovation. So it means that we need to anticipate, we need to have the right assumptions so as to launch our innovation, of course, to have the right innovation. And um, also to be sure that after the launch, we follow them carefully and to react if there is any deviation related to the, to the assumptions that we give at the beginning. The key issues. The main one was we had a process in place since more than 10 years in terms of demand management process uh, and also in terms of system. So change management for the transition was to go to an integrated SNOP. It was a big change for Bonduel. We were used to work in by function, in silo, by region, by market. Um, so how can we get a consolidated view and overview of what we were doing in Europe? The so long-term vision for commercial activities were not available or are not available. So implement common and share process between sales, marketing and supply chain. And now the last one is we have, we have no split between standard and promo item. But actually what is a promo item? So definition phase, what are the standards, promo, objectives? How can we get a long view on what we want to propose to our customer and to our co consumer? And depending on the organization of our markets, it can be very, very complex. For some of them, we can have information on the short term and nothing on the long term. So it's a part of the education that we can have to our customer, but mainly internally on what we want to do. So you can see, is it a system or a process issue? Um, when I arrived uh, some, some months ago now, um, we were talking a lot about a system. And uh, if you want to decentralize a big process as a demand management, you need to be very clear on what is the model? What do we want to have? What will be the day, daily work of the people working on the demand management? So it's a process view. So we started to work on Merlin, which is more uh, the decentralization of the sales forecast, but also on the organization so as to have the right information for the demand management. So it's linked to the IBP and you can see the six bubble linked to that. It's as a framework that we implement in Bell at the moment and supported this process, we have the system. So our roadmap started nearly two years ago now with a pilot, with the analysis, model recipe, we started to train and with the support of a future master in terms of demand management process. Um, then we had, uh, sorry, um, a year ago, so in Q1, we had a total project review. Um, it was related to some organization. We had implemented the new supply chain organization in the region, um, and um, we had to face to a um, new role, how to define this new role in the markets. And the role of the supply chain, not only at the central level, but also at the market level. So in Q1 last year, we review everything. We had also some corrections to do in, in the system. And we listed exactly what we wanted to do in as a core model. And end of last year, it, uh, we restarted the deployment of the two regions with three regions and 10 markets with a lot of trainings, communication, SNOP workshop, and the continuous improvement with Shuttermaster linked to the system. Now, 2018, the focus is really on the SNOP. How do we get the right information, insights, and the key data assumptions so as to be able to have accurate information for our sales forecast? So we are going to conclude this project, the Merlin project, at the end of this year and continue or follow through uh, the SNOP with uh, all the different parts of the Bell organization. Retail, 
brand, um, food service, private label. So it's a big Rubik's Cube to manage. And next year, we will really focus on the sustainability of our SNOP process. We have worked a lot on the S and OP will be the objective of next year. For this project, uh, we had to be very clear in terms of roles. So we had the project leader to define the standard, communicate and prioritize. And um, uh, so it's, um, it's uh, and prioritize yeah, and decide sometimes. The demand planning key user, it was our functional expert. So analyze parameters, um, test also, and be able to train the different people in the markets. And now their role is big support. So these people uh, are in my team at, uh, at the central supply chain team. Um, they were used to do as uh, a demand management and now they, done, they give the key uh, of uh, this job to, uh, to the markets and their job are continuously changing. So they, they were doing something else a year ago and in one year, probably they will do something else also. The demand planner switches a new role in the markets, new function. So we start really from the beginning, explaining what, what, is, what are their roles, what should they do tomorrow. So they are not here to just data crunch numbers in the system. They have really some added value to give to the business. So anticipate and look at the future and not only in the past and what we have done or sold and, and all that things. And when you implement a system, we have the IT team and the FM consultant as a project management expertise and support also for all the key steps of the projects, looking at what we were doing, um, modifications needed, and uh, try also to um, adapt at some times uh, so the functionalities. And uh, so it's still ongoing because it's, uh, it's it's a continuous improvement project. So with Future Master, it's not new. It's a 15 years of collaboration, not only with Bell, it's also with BIM, so in Russia, with Fresh in, uh, in, in Europe, and also uh, BAL in, uh, in the US. In terms of um, um, the modules that we are using, everyone uh, in Bonduel are using the demand planning tools. In Bell, we have also the promo planning for France, uh, Spain, Italy, and uh, North Europe. Uh, in French, uh, they are using demand, and it's also um, the APS module for France. And BIM and BAL are working on demand planning and promo module. So it's a long story, but also it can be a challenge because we started to implement that 15 years ago and the number of people and resources was quite different 15 years ago. So it's also the right time to, I will not say we start from a blank page, but actually to question ourselves on does it still work like that? Or do we need to change our ways of working, our processes to adapt to the challenges that we have now? The supply chain transformation is at the heart of this project. We need to reinforce our strengths. We are very strong in operation. We are very strong in um, anticipate and plan the hectare and the link to uh, the agriculture part. We are very strong also in reactivity and problem solving. We have no issue in terms of uh, service level. Um, I think that in terms of benchmark, we are, very, we are quite high. Um, nevertheless, we, if we want to go forward, we need to develop our supply chain in terms of cap capabilities, stakeholder relationship, it's linked to break the silo, and in terms of technology. So we are all talking about uh, digital supply chain. Honestly, we are quite far from that. But we have an ambition to um, um, to professionalize also our system, our ways of working, and make Bonduel supply chain a competitive advantage. So it's really a new role for the supply chain. We want to create value and not seen only as a support team, 
it's uh, we can be a co-pilot and it's one team it's a quite new in Bonduel. as i told you we created the supply chain two years ago so it's a part of our roadmap it's uh, to create this team as uh, in Bonduel or long life so you have seen i haven't shown you a lot of information in terms of results um, we want to, um, of course, follow some indicators and for the demand management, the two main ones are sales forecast accuracy and the BIAS. And uh, we are following two, the long term and the short term. The so long term, we can easily understand that uh, we need to be accurate for our hectare reservation. So it's a 12 months uh, rolling accuracy that we need to follow. And, um, and for the short term, we decided to, uh, to follow the one month uh, sales forecast accuracy, just due to the fact that it's linked to our reactivity for the packing, uh, packing planning. In this chart, for the long term, uh, if we take as a brand retail ambient, the good news is that we are still very high. It means that even if we have decentralized our demand management, we can't see bad effect in the sales forecast accuracy. And in terms of bias, we are around uh, zero and minus two percent, which is not too bad. So the people who are now uh, working in the markets are still very accurate on the long term for the brand. For the private label, we can see uh, a decrease. It's really related to the changes that we face with our customer. Um, we need some more reactivity, we need to adapt, and we have really a lot of constraints. So it's part of our continuous improvement program. Nevertheless, on the short term, the story could be a little bit different. For the brand retail ambient, it's still stable in terms of sales forecast accuracy, but it's at around 50%. So probably we have room of improvement. I would like to have a 70 or 70, 75% in one or two years, it will be great. But we are still stable. So BIAS is, another, is really declining with really big, big variation. So it's our learning curve. So it's not, I will say, extraordinary results, but we follow that and um, we have some action plan to, uh, to improve this part. And we have nearly the same picture for the private label. The CSF of that is um, really with a triptych uh, people process tool. For the people is to have a clear and shared strategy, to have the full support from the leadership team. It doesn't work if you haven't that and it's related to our SNOP IBP process and uh, the way we want to reorganize also our supply chain. Change management, so saying that I can say it's, uh, it's um, it can't means everything and nothing. So it's really linked to the behavior and the capability that we have to look at the future and the ambition that we have. For the people, training and communication is already, always key. Uh, we need to create value and we need to um, uh, use the value of our people to do that. Dedicated people for the project, trust and transparency is really key. In terms of process, standard process, suitable to market and resources. We have a big di uh, differences between our markets. France, for example, is a big one. We have five major customers. But if you are looking at um, Centrist, for example, it's um, six or seven markets, very small one, some traditional trades with very small shops, so quite different and limited number of resources. Clear roles and responsibilities with a core model is also a critical success factor. And the tool. So the tool is a way to achieve all this ambition. So we, mean, we need to measure and improve, of course, to have the right tool and the integrated tool is really key and the core model so as to be sustainable with that. 
So where are we? So here you have some words from our colleagues in Europe. And um, we are, I will say that we are at the start. And uh, so we know it's a journey and we need to have a lot of energy and discipline. But actually people that can see that uh, things are moving on, it's not ideal and we will not get the perfect picture tomorrow, but at least we are working on it, everybody on the same way. Thank you very much. So now if you, uh, I give the hand to... Yes, thank you, Natalie, for your very interesting, very, very clear presentation. Um, so let's start now the Q&A session. We, we received many questions from the attendees. Uh, we're going to try to respond to as many as possible during this 15 minute Q&A session. So let's look at the first question. Natalie, what are the major challenges of the digital transformation of your supply chain and why? So, um, major challenges is, um, well, in terms of, um, for Bonduel, for the digital and system point of view, is uh, we had uh, uh, some system, um, uh, how to say it, uh, politically correct? Well, no, old one, so I can't be. And, uh, and uh, with a lot of uh, specificities, um, so it, it's working and it's working quite well. So, but if we want to move forward, um, the core model is really key. So how to move to this core model, this is the more challenging part. But in terms of people is also the behavior and the transformation of, uh, of our organization and uh, with the support of all the key stakeholders. Digital and system, yeah, it will come. I hope so in the, in the coming years, but it takes time. And it's the energy that we need to have uh, and to keep every day so as to transform that. This is a challenge. Okay, thank you for this um, honest um, response. So you mentioned uh, Bonduel supply chain as a competitive advantage. As a, as a target. Um, so what are your recipes? What are the key actions plan to achieve that, to build that? Um, so in terms of competitive advantages, uh, first, uh, it's, uh, we want to improve our supply chain capabilities. So it can be very strange to say that uh, as a start, but uh, it's uh, really linked to have a common language. Uh, so as to um, really work on the same way. And then uh, we need to work internally on our role and provide analysis. So it's, um, the first step is competitive advantage, but also the recognition in Bonduel of the value of the supply chain. We want to have a co-pilot role. So put um, really the supply chain on the heart of the decisions of the businesses looking first to customer request rather than operation constraints. So our value chain is um, really, it's based on, on uh, let's say three points. It's we need to measure and to act, we need to optimize and we need to develop and communicate. So it's really to go from operation view to business management view. Our supply chain needs to support this change and we also need to be able to adapt us rapidly to market and customer changes. So it can be very conceptual saying that, and um, uh, sometimes I'm not enough concrete, so probably my team will love, but so I want to keep the direction and the ambition that we want to have linked to that. So it's really, we want to be a co-pilot, so we need to create the value of that and uh, be able to analyze then. After that, we will be able to help also our customer. So when I say that, I'm really thinking about probably the private label or the food service, which are very specific and dedicated markets. It's quite difficult to manage the contracts and all the different variation in food service, for example. So how can we get that? Also, uh, the analyzing and provide uh, the right information to our sales team. Okay, so 
Natalie, we have a question regarding the, the sponsorship of uh, for this project. Um, so who was the sponsor for this project? And um, we have another question that is quite similar. It's actually regarding the, the ambition of this project. Do you have sponsorship of the executive team? How do they help you in this digital transformation project? So sponsorship, sponsorship is really key. So the sponsor of the project was the Bell president. And, uh, and when I arrived, uh, uh, I received also a lot of support from our, our European and marketing sales director, which is now since a few days, our new Bell president. So it's really key. Would you need, if you want to have this kind of transformation, the support of the leadership team? at the European level and also at region level. So at region level, it's as region directors. So when I started my first, um, um, first trip, I will say, or travel in, uh, in Europe was to meet uh, all the teams, not only supply chain, but also marketing, sales, and at all level. So it was a year ago, but even now I have still a lot of communication with them so as to be aligned on the roadmap, what are the key next step, and if they need some support, they, they can always come and discuss. And um, um, you can't implement this kind of solution without them. You need to have energy and discipline. It's a journey, it takes time. You haven't any results on the next or the few, uh, the next three months. So it's really more than that. And for the digital transformation, actually um, in, in Bonduel, we have, um, uh, the IT team has really an ambition to transform uh, the way our system are managed. So we have a digital transformation plan for the coming years. And uh, fortunately, Thanks to this project in terms of SNOP and decentralization of uh, the sales forecast, we have been put in priority uh, for the next months, I will say, with the IT team in terms of digital transformation and new system update. Um, okay, Nathalie, so was it easy to move? Um, I'm sure it was not, but to move from a centralized demand management process to a decentralized process done by market. Alors, easy is not really the word, <laughs> honestly. Um, so in my team, I had uh, three people working at the central level as demand planner. Um, but actually, um, we transformed this role and uh, um, it wasn't really uh, demand management. So we have created these new roles in the supply chain, in the market. So we have dedicate, dedicated people um, in the markets working on the sales forecast. But actually, it was completely new. So, um, and maybe I realized that uh, not at the beginning, but after a few months, the process were not existing. So we have really spent a lot of time to, um, to build the process, build the core model. So even now we haven't finished, we are still discussing or changing. Uh, nevertheless, we are doing that with them. And uh, we spent a lot of time to train to explain and also organize, not only with the supply chain, it's also to explain to all the key stakeholders what is the role of the supply chain. So it can be with sales, marketing, uh, zone director, and so and so. So um, the, the central supply chain team is still giving uh, a lot of support uh, and um, probably in the next months or next years, their role will be to focus on education, consolidation also, they can have a role of challenge, but give them really a view of, um, um, yes, a step back, be able to have the step back uh, and not going too much in details because we know that it can be the worst if you are um, on your daily work. So not going back to a firefighting things and not to uh, react too much on the short term. Um, 
um, were there many differences between uh, the local markets? Yes, a lot of differences and uh, the complexity is completely uh, amazing, I will say. Um, we have five regions and 27, 27 markets. But for example, France, it's one region, one market. But if you are looking at uh, North Europe, the complexity is completely different. Benelux, all the Nordics, South Europe also, you have a Spain, Italy, Portugal, and so and so. Um, so it's a complexity to manage. It's also a complexity of uh, customers. You can have our delivery point, if we are talking of, from a logistic point of view. Uh, you can have five customer or hundred customer. So how to manage that? And in terms of demand management and the granularity on where we are doing the sales forecast is really key. If we are doing it at two um, really low level, uh, well, it's, uh, it's time consuming. But in VRN, if you are doing that at very too high level, it will be completely wrong. So it's really the balance between all these things uh, which are really key. And, um, and we had also to take into account the number of resources available. In the market, we can have a dedicated demand planner, but only 20% of his time. So um, we need to manage that. Okay, so um, we are running actually short, uh, short of time. So um, I'm just going to ask you maybe two other questions. One is regarding the key success factors of your project. So what are the key success factors? So the key success factor for us um, will be really to, um, um, to have more accurate information on the short term. But saying that it's, um, um, Sorry. Uh, so the key success factors, it will be to have really um, a new role recognized uh, as um, a support of our business and uh, support on, in terms of uh, how do we make the decision. So the big difference will be that. Uh, and in the, in the future, I hope so that we will be able also to um, um, to have more leverage information. So I mean, I don't care about uh, having a, a bad sales forecast uh, if I have something stable, because if we have something stable, we can improve. Uh, and uh, the key success factor from a system point of view is to have a core model that we're able to support uh, and a core model in terms of process. Like that, we can also develop people in terms of benchmark between the different region and markets, be able to support each other. So transversal view on, on um, uh, our function in supply chain. Um, Natalie, one last question. Um, what are the next challenges in, in, the supply, in your supply chain transformation journey? So during the last year, we have worked on the, a lot on the sales part of the SNOP, uh, so with this decentralization. So uh, the next big subject will be the OP part, so operation planning. Um, just because uh, uh, we want to have, uh, we want to anticipate. Uh, we need also to answer much faster to our customer requests on, and. Uh, uh, the capability that we have to modify or to, uh, to give information in terms of product availability on the next month is really key. And from an operational point of view, it's also to be able to uh, balance and manage our, our resources in terms of capacity. So it's a next challenge and it's really a big one. And the same as the Merlin project is um, the both sides are it's process point of view and system point of view.
So let's finish now. So let's end this webinar. Um, thank you very much again, Natalie, for your presentation today. And thank you for, to the attendees for joining. We are very much interested in having your feedback on this webinar. So please take a couple of minutes to fill in the evaluation survey that you will be receiving shortly. The replay of the webinar will also be communicated to you soon. Last but not least, for your information, so our next Supply Chain Leaders webinars will take place on the 19th of July and will be presented by Future Master. It will be focusing on sales forecast forecast improvement strategies and more specifically on the topics of segmentation and aggregation. Well, that's it for today. Thank you again to everyone for joining today. Thank you, Nathalie, and we wish you all a 